Hello, my name is David Long. I'm an area manager for the Southern U.S. for Loveland Products, and today I wanted to talk to you kind of as a follow-up on my first video regarding soybean growth stages. Probably one of the most critical ones behind the R3 growth stage, and that's going to be determining R6.5. Well, why is it important? Well, the reason it's important is because in the Deep South, and what I consider the Deep South will be Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, uh, where we traditionally uh, desiccate a lot of our soybean crop, knowing that growth stage and, be, and being able to identify it is absolutely imperative. So why is it important? Let's discuss that. A couple of reasons as to why desiccation is very important in the Deep South. We also, we have a, we have a threat every year, of course, of uh, adverse weather. And the sooner we get a crop out, of course, it's always an advantage. So when we put a desiccant out at the right time, we ultimately can push our harvest uh, up uh, about seven to 10 days on average. And that's extremely significant when you think about letting a crop dry down naturally versus actually being able to push it seven to 10 days. The second most important aspect that I want to discuss too as well is coming more from an engineering standpoint, and that's the concept of harvest efficiency. Harvest efficiency simply means using less diesel and getting over more acres in less time. That crop comes out faster and you have less uh, wear and tear on your machine, so ultimately it pays you dividends at the end of the year as well. So how early is R6.5? R6 in a soybean growth stage in the upper foremost nodes can be classified when you have one uh, full uh, pod, excuse me, one full seed in that pod cavity that's absolutely filled out. So if you go to R6.5, you're going to have one where you can actually lift it and you'll see some seed separation inside that pod. And it's kind of scary when you really start looking at it because a lot of times you can actually see just a little bit of turning on those leaves or turning on those pods, but the pod is really what you want to key in on. Many varieties vary a tremendous amount depending on maturity group and depending on planting date as well as soil type in terms of when you're going to actually see maturity actually start to dry the crop down. But ultimately, all we're trying to do with a desiccant is try to knock these leaves down and let Mother Nature dry it down. R6.5 is going to equal about 50% moisture. When you get to R7, you're going to be dropping in that 30% range. And under these hot, dry conditions that we're experiencing today, you could potentially expect to lose about three quarters to 1% moisture a day. So that gives you a little bit of an idea in terms of your harvestability from a calendar standpoint. The one thing I did want to reiterate as I close these comments are GPA is extremely important. The higher the water volume uh, in, your, in your ground rig, the better off your desiccation application is going to be, as well as the importance of a very quality surfactant, something like Liberate, which is what we generally suggest across the South at a half percent volume for volume. If you have any questions on soybean desiccation, why it's important, how it's important, or how to conduct it, contact your local Nutrient Ag Solution representative.